646. 250 pounds. And absolutely rootless. Absolute Batman is the most intense we've seen the Dark Knight in years. He doesn't hold back, especially when it comes to protecting innocent lives. But with no money, no mansion, and Alfred out to kill him, this Bruce Wayne has to be hardcore to survive this version of Gotham. Last issue, Batman discovered a group of anarchists who go by the name the Black Mask Gang, and he gave them a reason to remember him. We also got a glimpse into the event that shaped this version of Bruce's life, the death of his father. Batman was born out of violence, a horrible tragedy that shaped the trajectory of his life. But when a vigilante, MI6 agent by the name of Pennyworth starts tracking the lonely life of Bruce Wayne, he discovers the interconnectivity between a hero's shell life and the many layers of the Black Mask Gang. I've skimmed over the events of the last issue just now. If you haven't seen it, please go check it out. It was so sick and be sure to subscribe while you're at it. I'm still a small channel, but I'll get there one day. I love comics, and I have a feeling you do too. So strap in, and let's dig into this one. Dad, please, open the door. Dad. Huh? Since Batman's first appearance, the Black Mask Gang have turned up the mayhem on Gotham, but in return, Batman's going even harder on them. He can't be everywhere all at once, but he's there when he's needed, like right now. Alfred's been secretly helping him from the shadows, because the more he disrupts things, the better it is for him. He's seemingly being overwhelmed and he should retreat, but no matter what, he finds a way. He plans ahead, and he uses everything around him to win. He knows every inch of this city, and he uses it to his advantage. He's flooded the aquarium floor, where the gang have gathered, while he is perched up high like a bat. He drops a ball of concentrated vinegar into the salty water, turning it into hydrochloric acid. The gang run for their lives before their skin burns off. Alfred has discovered his stash houses that he hides all over the city and he's definitely committed to the whole bat thing anyway. When he's not Batman, he lives a normal life. Apart from meeting with the odd resistance group like the Red Hoods, he goes to work and comes home like normal people, but he often visits Blackgate Prison to see the man that murdered his father, Joseph Chill. Alfred was using advanced tech to keep his safe houses hidden, but his boss tells him to stop. So he opens the floodgates and unleashes the gang on Bruce Wayne. When they arrive at his main HQ, they're met with the resistance force of a rampaging bull. It's really him against the world. Mayor Gordon was the one who found Bruce the day his father died. He couldn't see him under all the bats, but that scream, that stayed with him for life. Bruce's mother Martha visits Gordon in the hospital and he asks how Bruce is, but really, he hasn't been the same since that day. He wouldn't go outside, he wouldn't play with his friends, he just wanted to be left alone. Even throwing his academic awards all out, he was broken. Back to the present, and Bruce is in contact with all those old friends despite him blowing them all off all the time. He eventually finds some time to play poker with them. His friends are Harvey Dent, Ozzy Cobblepot, Eddie Nigma, and Waylon Jones. But he's not here to have a laugh. He drops a giant black skull on the table. It belongs to one of the gang members. Eddie knows what it is. It's a map of the city, pinpointing where and when the party animals will attack next. Bruce continues with the game at hand, but Ozzy's on edge. Ozzy has his ear to the streets and says there's no coordination to these guys. They just seem to be destroying stuff, but their boss, well he's big time, kills everyone he meets. Ozzy then folds his hand. Eddie thinks he's outsmarted the guys and checks. 
and Waylon falls. What about Harvey? Harvey gives his two cents on the party animals issue, saying, It's more than just power. They want money. They want the chicken and the egg. Then he throws down two pairs. But Bruce has three aces. Four, if you count the Joker. Later that night, Bruce knows where they'll be next and tries to get a drop on them. The place is empty, but finds the computer and logs in. There's too many files to go through in one night, but one stands out, one he doesn't recognise. Arkham. Suddenly the screen turns on. It's him. It's the leader of the Black Mask Gang. He tells Bruce that he tipped off the police that he's here, and his people have surrounded him. But he's still waiting on his call, if he survives. Six foot six, 250 pounds of pure muscle and brutality emerges from the smoke, breaking open the elevator door, sliding down the shaft, and landing in a small hole at the bottom. Alfred has been waiting for him to show up this whole time. He says they can help each other out, even though they're enemies right now. But they have to get somewhere safe, asking if he has a car close by. You're standing in it. The Batmobile seems to be a colossal, souped up, battered out dump truck. You lose something? Selena, get up. You're coming with me. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed issue 2 of Absolute Batman. It seems to be amping up from here on out. Everything that issue 1 and issue 2 brought is just to the absolute extremity of everything. But yeah, let me know what you think down below. And if you want me to continue this series, please do let me know. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Peace.